Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm gonna be wearing digital clothes. Watch out, pokey clothes. Digi-clothes are coming for your merkin. So a couple of months ago, I was scrolling on my Facebook feed when I encountered a weird ad. As you guys know, I interact with my targeted ads a lot, so I do get a fair amount of strange ones. In fact, I am in a category called engaged shoppers. But this one in particular sparked my interest as it was advertising digital fashion with a picture of a bizarre gloved blazer dress. I wanted this dress. I like phalanges, but it seemed like it was only available in a digital version, whatever that means. So I went to this website, DressX, to snoop around a little bit. And it turns out that they sell a huge variety of digital clothes that you can purchase and they will then Photoshop onto you. Ranging from like trendy workout gear to tie-dyed evening gowns to completely gravity-defying avant-garde high fashion. And their reasoning behind behind selling digital clothing is threefold. One, it reduces clothing waste, so like you can buy a trendy item and just wear it once. Two, it makes having luxury items more affordable. And three, it's all size inclusive because they don't have to actually manufacture any specific items. It's just like an editable Photoshop file. And though I'm still trying to wrap my mind around all of the ins and outs of actually buying and wearing digital clothes, their array of items is pretty enticing. And there have been plenty of articles heralding digital clothing as the next big disruptor of the fashion industry. So I figured we better try this thing out for a week to see what it's all about. Now, DressX has recently launched an app where you can try on, purchase, and wear digital clothes. I look like an eyeball. Via augmented reality. All right, next. <laughs> Coffee jacket. X marks the spot. Your hands are crazy. <laughs> oh. oh, ooh, this one's cool. Yeah. Kind of like exclusive Snapchat filters. Excuse me, you caught me unawares. I'm just in my robe. I think this is sort of leaning into that NFT space. Oh! Ooh, oh! Oh, 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 oh. It's very a bug's life to me. Edgar Allan Poe-esque. Which right now is mostly focused on buying exclusive digital art as like an asset. Ooh, a starry chest. Which DressX's fashion designs could potentially function as, as is, but a lot of people theorize that the next step for NFTs will be interacting with your digital assets via AR. Well, apparently the next evolution of NFTs are on the way. Basically, it'll be virtual clothes that we can wear via augmented reality. Hold up, I just noticed this is $4,100 for a virtual shoe. But at this point, the app and their AR technology seem to be in the early stages. It's supposed to be kind of like a planetarium outfit, I think. Okay. Like celestial sky vibes. Oh my God. And though it is cool conceptually, look at the hands, the gloves. The gloves look terrifying. They've got some finessing to do. Oh, look, if I move my leg. Oh yeah. Look at the dress. So we're gonna focus on the still photo slash photoshopping aspect of their service because based on the pictures on their website, they seem to have that down. Like, some of these look really good. And I feel like to truly test out this service, we should try multiple different types of looks with different use cases and then post them and see what you guys think. So for day one, I decided to try and go for something that was cool, but still conceivably a look that could exist IRL. With the idea that maybe it would be interesting to try and test out if you could wear a virtual item and pass it off on social media as if you were actually wearing it. Yes, this is the catfish test. So I picked this dress slash cape look called the All Over Dress Coat Black by Andrew Pass for 35 bucks. That has kind of a kaleidoscopy, light bulb filamenty eye of Sauron print on it. And overall, despite my lack of ability to describe it, this is something I personally would love to wear. So we went out and took some photos to send to DressX for them to Photoshop. Now, one aspect of this 
process is that you have to take the photos beforehand. I guess that sounds intuitive, but it is kind of the opposite way that people usually wear clothes, where you can try it on first, get a feel for how it falls, and then decide how you might want to pose in it. Whereas for this, you kind of have to guess how the outfit is going to look on you later. Like, I don't think it's particularly easy to take a photo without the outfit you're going to be wearing in the photo. And Dress Sex recommends that you take photos with skin-tight clothing on that also doesn't interfere with their outfit in an evenly lit area, which is why I wore this slip dress next to this brick wall. And for this one, I didn't really mix up my posing that much just because I felt like the outfit was mostly cape, so I should just be like a long column. I mean, we gotta just try them. They look great, actually. I really like them. Great. All right, cape dress. It's really hot out here. And out of all of the ones we took, I liked this photo the best. It was playing it a little risky with like the windswept hair. Dress X does mention that they don't really like that, but we decided to see what they would send back. Okay, so this is what Dress X whipped up. It seems like they weren't too thrown off by the hair, which is good, but weirdly, they decided to add these kind of like leggings to the outfit. I'm not exactly sure why. My best guess is that maybe my slip was like a little bit too long for their dress, but it's still a weird choice. But we emailed them back and asked them to remove them for us, and they did, free of charge. So here is our final Dress X day one image. I think it looks pretty good. I think the only really suspicious part of it that looks super photoshopped is around the legs, like where the legs meet the back of the cape. There's just something jagged about my calf right here. Uh, but besides that, from far away, it's working for me. So we posted this to Instagram with kind of like a vague caption to see what people would think. And overall, I would say that people actually liked this photo. You look fire. Hey queen, are you cosplaying a mountain? I'd wear this TBH. There were a couple of suspicious minds. Some people just thinking I was generally up to no good for a video, which I was. I can smell the video being edited. And a couple of people who did think that the photo looked photoshopped, but weren't exactly exactly sure what was going on. It looks photoshopped, like she's just a sticker they slapped on the background, or it's the dress, I can't tell. Other than that, people were just like hyping up the dress and being really nice about it. Yes, step on me queen, which made me feel a little bit bad for catfishing them, but in the pantheon of catfishes, I think it's pretty harmless. So for day two, I decided to do a similar thing to day one, where I went for an outfit that I would possibly normally wear, just digital. Except this time, with more of like an evening slash event feel. And I found this collection that I really liked on the DressX website by designer 2WB. And of these, I chose this longer semi-fancy number, the NYX dress for $40. I really like the sheer layered part on top, as well as the cutouts, though I was curious to see how they would handle the sheer interplay with my chest, as I was not going to be naked taking the photo. In fact, that would have been very inappropriate because we decided to take this photo at an art museum. Maybe we can use the uh, art pieces like a green screen for anything. <laughs> <laughs> we chose this blue rectangle to pose in front of because the dress is kind of blue. Seemed to make sense. And out of all of the ones we took, we chose this one to send off. So I would say the photoshopped version we got back is actually pretty good. I think they did quite a good job with the mesh part, kind of layering it over the tube top I was already wearing. The only part that is a little sus to me is once again, like around the legs and feet. There's just something kind of sharp about these edges here. So my legs and their photoshopping, not a great match. Not sure why. Now, full disclosure, we did order a second similar dress like as a backup, and that one did not turn out so well. <laughs> I think it's mostly like the cutouts on the chest that are kind of weird, probably because my midriff in the original photo wasn't exposed. So they had to like invent this skin here, and that looks weird. But the first photo I like, me likey. 
Now, as for how we were gonna get feedback on it, I didn't wanna just post on the Instagram feed every single day, so we actually put this into a series of stories with some prompts. We sandwiched it in between some other polls to maybe make it a little less conspicuous, but also to possibly garner some more responses. And overall, I would say that people also seem to like this one a lot. The top is everything. You look like the fourth hex girl. Hot sun emoji. A lot of people actually said it gave them like modern Morticia vibes. Morticia Adams takes a job at the MoMA, which I consistently strive for. And though there were a few people who cried Photoshop, you drew it on or something. Ma'am, is this an edit? There were a lot fewer skeptical responses than on day one. Maybe because it was a story, people spent less time like zooming in on it. It just kind of flowed past, <laughs> but I think this one was a winner overall. Could have been the blue rhombus. Now for day three, I wanted to start to move away from realistic and into the more bizarre items. There were a few looks that kind of straddled the two, but when I saw this one, I knew we had to try it. Now this bad boy is appropriately named Long Long Sleeve by Laracott, and it costs $35. And this really reminds me of some of our ugly clothing items we've tried in the past, like the long sleeve jacket and the long legged jeans. And I figured we could post this under the guise that it was just another crazy clothing item for a video and to see if I could get away with it or if it was just too weird to be believable. Once again, Sophia, channel your inner Slender Man. And for our photo, we wanted to take a picture where my arms were swinging. It's kind of like Abbey Road soft, but just with your arms. So we could emphasize the long, long sleeves. And after several enthusiastic walks, I think we got something we could use. So this is the photo we got back. And overall, I think they did a pretty good job. Like the visual impact of the image is strong. They definitely got what we were going for with like the swinging arms thing because the sleeves look magnificent. Very Squidward-esque. There is something about like the back of my neck and neckline that's kind of weird. And I'm worried that might be the tell for some people that it's definitely fake. But from afar, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go with it. So this photo went back on the Instagram feed, and I think because it's framed from a bit further away and the emphasis is so much on the sleeves, most people accepted it as a very weird, but real shirt. The ungodly sequel to the long-armed jean jacket. So people either tried to roast me for wearing it, you look like an octopus. Squidward, is that you? No. This is Patrick! Or tried to support my questionable fashion decision. Why am I kind of obsessed? This is oddly majestic. Some people did have growing suspicions that I was up to something for a video, but I think at this point, they just thought it was another ugly clothing video. I am mildly concerned, but not surprised. And I think most of the disbelief in the comments actually came from how strange they thought the top was. I refuse to believe this garment is real. And not from suspicions of Photoshop. And actually quite a few people praised our photography skills for being able to capture the sleeves midair. I can only imagine how difficult it was to get this photo. Perfect shot. Also, interestingly, this Instagram got more likes than my birthday post, which is fine. It's fine. I see how it is. So for day four, I wanted to try out some of DressX's accessories. They actually have quite a wide array of shoes and bags and jewelry and hats and goggles. Those look pretty <laughs> solid. And I do think that the digital accessory use case kind of makes sense to me. Sick, man. <laughs> like you might want to add an accent to an IRL outfit. Are they earrings? Oh, oh! Either to make it more avant-garde. It's like an alien necklace. Yeah. Or to trick people into thinking you have some fancy stuff. You know, like add a Burberry scarf on there or a Birkin bag. I don't think that's exactly available yet, but I can see it happening. So I decided to wear a plain all black outfit and showcase a couple of vibrant accessories. For some exciting shoes, I went with these guys, the Quantum Boots by Alejandro Delgado for $50. And then I also got this Russian fur hat Bon Bon by Snow Snow. 
for $35. <laughs> Just as a quick note, these boots are available on the DressX app to try on. I look like nautical Hermes. They do look a little silly on there, but I just wanted to show you guys. It is I, Barnacle Boy. Now I will say, I think they botched this one. <laughs> the hat in particular looks super fake. It looks way too big. Like it's not even fully on my head. Like look how much hat there is on top of my head. It makes no sense. <laughs> the shoes are actually okay. The blue barnacles are quite detailed. And even though they don't necessarily look real, they at least look like they are on my feet. Full disclosure, this was actually our second take on the hat and boots. The first photo we sent them did come back with decent boots also, but the hat is somehow worse. I feel like if this hat looks too big in this one, the hat is too small. I should have known it was gonna be trouble when it walked in, as there were no photos of it on anyone, and also no 3D renderings of it. So, um, learn from my mistakes. So as for how and where we were gonna post this photo, I mean, I knew this one was a stinker, so I kind of wanted to hide it a little bit. So we decided to put it in an Insta story with a very simple poll, just asking people to pick hat, or boots. And as pretty much anyone would expect, the boots won overwhelmingly. I actually didn't ask for any comments. I just asked people to click hat or boots, but some people felt compelled to slide into the DMs and tell me that they thought the hat looked fake. This hat hurts my brain. That hat does not look real. I don't believe it is. The hat looks edited on. The shoes don't though. So I think DressX needs to make sure they are photoshopping their items onto people well. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work out. See, the numbers. Now for day five, I wanted to venture into a little bit of a different arena and try one of DressX's video looks. Oh. Besides their catalog of still image outfits, they do have some looks that are a little bit animated. Oh, oh it's cute! They have some that change color, this bag beats like a heart, and they have a few that blow in the wind. This to me seems like one of the potential advantages of digital clothing. I look like the ghost galaxy ride at Disneyland. You do. You know, the ability to play outside of the normal constraints of reality and photography. I like this one. It's like a timer. Like a kitchen timer? It is, yeah. So I picked this sort of teal gauzy robe by Eva Sviridova for $80. This look actually also comes with a bralette and some bike shorts, but rather than having to be photographed in a bikini, I decided to just wear my own outfit and then ask them to animate the robe on top of me. Channel your inner miscongeniality, Sophia. The dress is light as a feather. It's floating. We took these photos outside of the art museum, and though it was tough to find the right pose, as I was kind of trying to show off the future fluttering tassels that didn't exist yet. I feel like kind of like uh, Dan Stevens in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Emma Watson has to dance with me while like, I'm in my gray suit. Yeah. We finally settled on this one. And then this is the photo, or I guess video, they sent back. I think overall this looks quite good. I actually thought the video look was gonna be more obviously not real, but everything is moving so naturally, especially with like the texture of the jacket, that it almost looks like I was just posing really still and the breeze was, was blowing my jacket around me. The only questionable part for me is this frond down here kind of caressing my calf. I don't know, there's just something weird about it to me. But besides that, I'm pretty pleased with it. So obviously in some ways, the jig was gonna be up on Instagram as this was pretty obviously doctored in some way. And people in the comments caught on pretty quickly that not only was it moving, oh my God, it's moving. How the fu- This is freaking me out. But also that this was a virtual fashion item. Is this like e-fashion? And for some people, this made all of our previous posts like click together. Oh shoot. The last three pictures were edited on her, just realized it, and led them to the conclusion that we must be doing a digital fashion video. So the next video is about virtual clothes, <laughs> though feedback for the jacket itself was pretty positive. It's low-key cute. 
encourage the cowardly dog vibes. It's given me Listerine cool mint strips in the best way possible. 10 out of 10, I would wear. I personally think the effect is cool, and if Instagram is going to emphasize video content more going forward, this could be a good workaround. I don't know. It's really not the worst idea. Instagram is not a photo app anymore. <laughs> So for day six, I continued down the less realistic, more fantastical path. It looks like you're wearing an oyster. Yes. There are just a lot of cool avant-garde, high fashion looks on Dress X. Ooh, I like this one. Hey, it, it photoshopped a thong onto you. And I wanted to try some of them out. Oh, bring oh, it back. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> back on. <laughs> so this is the Lilac Puffer by Dinal Winger which I believe stands for Diane Wallinger, for $30. All right, Soph, imagine you have a crazy jacket on. For this photo, I didn't really know how I should pose while wearing a giant bubble, but we did want to make sure to leave some room in the frame for the jacket because it seemed to be quite voluminous. So it did take us some tinkering to figure out, but we finally ended up with this photo. And this is the picture they sent back. Obviously, it doesn't look realistic, but overall, I think it looks pretty nice. There might be some Photoshop awkwardness around the ponytail, but besides that, I think it looks pretty good. They have the extra, like, pillows of the jacket kind of floating in the air, um, which I think is better than when they had them sort of fall off the jacket and sit on the ground in their ghost model 3D walk. Ghost 3D model walk. Is that how I say that? I also really like the texture of it. It's a nice shiny plastic. I am serving pool floaty realness. This jacket is actually also available in the DressX app. Oh, that was sudden. Did it work? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Which could have been helpful to try on before taking the photo if I had realized it was there. Okay, you can just put your hands right through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a ghostly puffer jacket. The app version is still pretty glitchy. Oh my God, look how much movement the pillows have on their own. It looks like they, they're trying to float away from you. <laughs> they're desperate to escape. But I just wanted to show you guys that it was there. So having done most of our posting on Instagram so far, we decided to mix up the platforms and post this photo onto the YouTube community tab. We were a little bit more explicit with soliciting responses as we don't usually post photos of outfits on there. And I think people were a little bit surprised to see it, but a lot of people knew that this was probably for an upcoming video. And a lot of people also quickly realized that this was edited or digital fashion. I think this looks unreal and my brain hurts. Why does that look photoshopped, but it isn't? Edit, I've convinced myself that it's definitely fake. But that didn't stop them from thinking it was also a cool jacket. That looks photoshopped in. I love it. 2000s inflatable furniture vibes. You're looking camp right in the eye. There were still a few people who thought this might be a real jacket. I can hear the sound of that from across the screen. Where did you get this? I need to know. And someone who was so convinced it was real that they actually admonished us for the potential negative environmental impact of leaving plastic balloons around. But most people knew it was fake. Now for day seven, I wanted to go for another avant-garde look, but this time, an expensive one. All of our other outfits we were able to get for less than $100, but DressX does have this one collection called Ouroboros, which is sort of sci-fi, futuristic, avatar-esque clothing that goes for like $1,000 per look, which is confusing because I kind of thought that some of the idea behind digital clothing was that it is less expensive than real clothes. After a little sleuthing, it seems like Ouroboros is actually a somewhat well-known digital designer, but DressX works with a lot of known designers who offer stuff for less. So I'm not sure why this line is so much more expensive, but I figured we had to try it. All right, interesting makeup look. I hope it doesn't ruin everything. <laughs> It might. I committed, okay. Don't worry, this is the only the really expensive one. Now, as for which outfit we chose, I decided to go for this replicant look because I figured we hadn't done any pants yet this week. This one has pants and angelfish-like tendrils. So it's a win-win. We're trying something. We're trying something. 
that what you're trying? <laughs> That's the futuristic look. Send that to them. So they sent us this edit back and I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously we spent a pretty penny for it, so I would hope that it would be good, but I do think it has some like nice texture to it. And I will say for how crazy this outfit is, it's not the most unflattering thing I've ever worn. Or not worn, worn. So I'm not sure it's worth a thousand dollars, but it's definitely one of the better jobs DressX has done for us. Maybe they knew better than to mess around with that price tag attached. What do they call me in like sales terms? A whale? Like if I'm willing to spend the money, they better not lose me. <laughs> so for this final post, I decided to return to the Instagram feed once again, just for the grand finale. And though I had braced myself for this look to be duly roasted, I actually think people might have liked this one, can I say the best, out of all of them. I think so. Partially, I think, because it was just so out there. Wow, I think this might actually be the weirdest thing you've ever worn. I don't know what this is, but yes to everything. Serving us Golgi body yadi yadi And partially because I think the photoshopping job was just the best. I want to hate this, but I just can't. Some people even thought it looked like a pop star music video costume. You have arrived to Chromatica. Obviously, a lot of people knew that it was edited and also for a video, but overall, I thought it was very well received, with actually the most comments out of all of our posts from the week. If this is a video, this is probably my favorite outfit. So, a thousand dollars well spent? Maybe? Jury's still out on that one. So that was my week wearing digital fashion. To start with the positives, I actually thought that some of the photos we got this week were really cool. And though I don't think any of them fully fooled the internet into thinking they were 100% real, that didn't stop people from liking how they looked. I also think that DressX's catalog of items is impressively large and varied, so I think they're doing a good job of sourcing digital clothes that are just straight up cool and desirable. Now, as for the negatives, I did find it a bit awkward to take pictures with the intent of adding clothes to them later. You have fun? I just feel kind of naked. You are. Yeah. <laughs> and I also think that DressX can sometimes miss with their photoshopping. And though they are willing to do adjustments to the same photo for free, I do think they need to be able to consistently deliver a good product for their value proposition to make any sense. Also, I do think the fact that you have to pay for every individual picture is a little flawed. Like if I wanted to do a carousel post on Instagram of three pictures of me in the same outfit, I would would have to buy that outfit on their website three separate times. I'm not sure what the workaround there could be. I guess that's why they're developing their app, but that needs some finessing as well. Why is it like you're wearing a Mountain Dew bottle? <laughs> All in all though, I think I am pro digital fashion. I think there are some kinks to work out and I am not really on board with dropping a thousand dollars for a digital outfit, but I like the idea that virtual fashion can be untethered from reality and can be purely about imagination and fantasy. I don't think it's gonna replace real clothing, but overall, I am down. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here is my Instagram. Here is my TikTok. Here is my shorts channel, newly minted YouTube shorts channel. And here is our live streaming channel where we live stream every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And with that, I will see you guys a next time.